Hi there, welcome to you some DIY, my name's Ben. In this video, we're gonna check out a load of different applications on the Meta Quest 3. Okay, so I've been using the Meta Quest 3 now for months, uh, loving it, uh, trying out different things, different applications, getting different things working. And we've done, we've done videos so far on the channel on different stuff. Uh, so connected to a PS5, uh, using the Xbox application, uh, tons more, um, and we're just really scratching the surface. And hopefully, with the MetaQuest 3 and other headsets, um, kind of the best is yet to come. The development on top of what's there already is going to be brilliant. Uh, so, it's quite an exciting time, I think, for VR headsets generally, and obviously into AR and uh, MR. Um, so, yeah, and now with the Vision Pro coming along, uh, hopefully, that'll kickstart things even further. Um, so this video, I'm going to go through a few different applications, a few different things you can do with applications on the MetaQuest 3, uh, just to show maybe some capability people weren't aware of, and just to show and share some of the applications that I use and how I use them. So we'll jump into the headset, we'll cover off first of all applications that are kind of built and are on the MetaQuest 3, uh, built for, sorry, and on the MetaQuest 3, uh, from the app store that's built into the, into the Meta uh, ecosystem. Uh, and then we'll have a look at some of the side-loaded applications that I use and how you can use them. And maybe some tips and tricks that I've picked up uh, that you might not know. So we'll jump into the headset, into the metaverse and check things out. Okay, first of all, I'm going to take my glasses off. So I've done a video, um, I've got the AdLens VR Pro Optics inserts, lens inserts in there, allow you to not wear your glasses inside there, which are brilliant. Uh, so I'll link up here somewhere to that video we did. Uh, so let's jump inside the headset, first of all. Uh, this is um, a cheap £11 um, head strap I'm using uh, that I got off AliExpress. Again, I'll link to that video if you want to check that out. It's working really well so far, especially for the price. I'm really, really impressed. So let me just kick, think, kick recording off inside the headset so you can see what's going on. Okay, we are recording. So hopefully you can see I'm obviously in pass-through mode at the moment uh, and I've got three applications open currently at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure if people realise they can do this with, with applications and multiple applications, uh, but you can have three side-by-side built-in um, that are built into the MetaQuest 3 running at the same time. So just to sh uh, really quickly show you, uh, so on the left-hand side over here I've got YouTube. So this is the YouTube uh, application built into the MetaQuest 3. Uh, I've got the Houston DIY channel here. Um, so you can jump into here. So if I just open up the um, previous one we did, which was around... Let me just mute the audio. Uh, so this is the one we did where the Nintendo 3DS games on the headset. Uh, again, another use case there for you. Um, so you jump over to that video. I'll link up here if you want to check that out. So you can play. You can be playing YouTube videos over here, which is great. Um, in the middle here, obviously, I've got the recording at the moment. And on the right-hand side, I've got a web browser. So I've just, got, I've just put Amazon on for now. Uh, you can see you can just be browsing Amazon, but I can look, keep an eye over here on my YouTube video. So if you want to be looking at things that have been shared on a YouTube video, perhaps over on Amazon, you can do that at the same time. Um, so that's that. So that's Amazon. You can go, and obviously you can go to kind of any website you want. So if I go to news. Uh, dot sky. Go dot com. So that should take us over to the Sky News website. Um, again, I'm not sure if you can do a watch live, but we'll see if you can. So watch a bit of Sky News over there, your YouTube that has now paused. In fact, can you play both at the same time? So Sky News, it does seem to pause. You can't have two video players at the same time, but you can still browse, obviously browse websites. So I can play the YouTube video and I can be browsing across this website here. So you can see there's the Sky News and there's a video continuing to play over there. So that's great. And then in the middle, I've currently got my camera application open, but if I go here and press that, I can then go and open a different application. And this is uh, an application I've done a separate video on, but I will show you anyway. So this is the uh, remote display beta application. So this is the single screen remote display application connected into a laptop. So I've got a laptop here Hopefully you can see that I'm through and pass through. And I've got my Houston laptop. So I've got the application loaded on to the laptop and I can connect to it there. So if I do that, connect to it, it should hopefully connect through. Okay, and we're in. So I've got my mouse and my keyboard here. And so I'm using my, my uh, laptop. So I've got YouTube playing still with my video over there. I've got a web browser over there at the same time, which I can do hand tracking on, I can be moving around there. 
and then also I've got my uh, laptop here so I can open up any application here that I want to. Um, I've got a uh, cry cut, I'm doing a des design on here so you could be doing a quick cry cut design uh, on here um, while watching a YouTube video and obviously um, looking at the website, maybe you're following a tutorial on a website perhaps for a cry cut design, I don't know, the, the, the uh, potential is endless I think to be honest with you but it really shows kind of true multitasking on massive screens in front of you as well. Um, so if I hover over, if I get my, you can actually go bigger with these screens as well. So I can go maybe a little bit smaller with my YouTube video, a little bit smaller with that. And obviously I can move this around as well. As you can see, it's really, really good there in terms of multitasking. Um, and what you can do there is obviously it's brilliant to be honest with you, it's really really good and I do this if I'm sat down on the sofa just chilling um, I can be doing multiple things at once and that's really really good and this will work with any of the built-in applications um, that are single screen applications on the Meta Quest. So this won't work for example if I, uh, so this middle screen now if I go to my applications and if I try and open up my cloud gaming application I think this will close everything down to be honest with you. And it will just open up that. Yeah, it does. So that opens that up. And then if I try and open that, you can't. So there's some application like the Xbox One, it's a single screen only. Um, which I guess is because it's obviously using more potentially CPU, etc. on the headset. Um, so hopefully that gives you a great understanding and a good picture of what's going on there with multi-screen with Meta apps. Okay, so that's Meta applications. Obviously, they're kind of from the Meta App Store. Um, I think there's a couple from the App Lab that are built into the headset. So they're not sideloaded, they're just directly from Meta Store or the Oculus Store, whatever it's called now. But the official applications as such on the headset. And that works great. I use that multitasking all the time. Not always with three, but general, generally with two. Uh, so I'll have like uh, YouTube open and I might have WhatsApp open. And it just saves, you do, literally don't need to go on your phone, then you've got WhatsApp, YouTube, web browser, which is brilliant. Um, so what we'll do next, we'll cover off some side-loading applications. So I've done a couple of videos that have used this functionality. It's around side-loading applications. Uh, because the MetaQuest 3 is running on Android, basically, um, I've probably really oversimplified that, but it will run any application, in theory, that's Android on the headset. That's in theory, there are some uh, restrictions, etc. I've just really masked that, but basically you can run Android applications on the headset. Um, so I've done this so far for the 3DS one I just showed, um, 3DS games, I use a Citra, that's an APK that's loaded on to the headset using SideQuest. Um, so I won't cover that off in detail, but there are other videos and I will link in the description and up here uh, to some SideQuest stuff in our previous video and what other people have done. Um, so yeah, I've loaded a few, um, side loaded a few APK files now onto the headset to try things out just for further flexibility, just to try other bits and bats out. So I'll just go through a couple of applications on there now, show you some of the restrictions and what you can and can't do. So we'll jump back into the headset and we'll cover that off now. Okay, we're back in the headset now. So you can see I've just come back to where I was before. I just kicked the recording off. I've lost my remote desktop session in the middle. Um, so that is that. So I've got um, three applications open currently. So if I go into my applications now, let me just bring this a little bit closer. I will show you a different view actually. So if I click, click on this little icon here between notifications and the pass through, it's got the switch distance. So this changes the view. So this puts three windows in front of you rather than having that wrapped around look. So you've got like more of a flat view, which for some things you may prefer, but obviously for that slightly more immersive feel, you would you would want that kind of more wrap around feel. Um, so yeah, so there you can do that. So let me jump to this one for now. So let me play my video over here so we can just see that continuing hopefully so that's my youtube video playing there got my web browser there and in the middle here in my application library there's a drop down box which will show me my unknown sources application these are basically the side loaded applications um so if i've shown you just a couple that i've done so far just to give you an idea so i have done uh tiktok so open tiktok as you see, that is running there. So I've got basically a TikTok application logged into there as well. So you see my profile, my personal profile, not the Houston DIY one. Um, so that's there. And I've got, I can go through and I can use, if I show you, I can just use my flick down button to 
flick through videos, which is great. So you can kind of have your hand back there and you can flick down through videos. You can again do it just by pressing the trigger button at the back and sliding down. But yeah, that's TikTok. If I go to the wrap around look, I can then obviously resize that as well. So I've got a massive TikTok over there. Um, it's obviously not playing the video because we've determined you can't play two videos, but I do have the web browser over here as well. Um, so that's TikTok. TikTok playing absolutely fine. The quality is really good as well. I don't know if you can see that on, on the screen recording, but the quality of TikTok on there, it looks better than my phone, to be honest with you. Um, you can really see, obviously, the better quality videos looking really, really good. Um, so that's TikTok working really well. So if I go back to my application library, you can see I'm back in there at my unknown sources. I'll go into Google Earth. So I'll be messing around with Google Earth a little bit in here. And again, I will go to wrap around because I can then resize the window. So this isn't the immersive uh, kind of VR version of um, of uh, Google Earth that you can get if you're using a PC VR, uh, but it is a really good experience and the, and the the kind of latency and the the reaction time is brilliant to be honest with you. So I'm just using the trigger uh, button on the back to move around, and I'm just using the cursor. Um, the analog stick uh, to just kind of zoom in and out. So you can see there, okay, let's book him on, booking on Palace. Got 3D mode turned on. And depending on your internet connection, obviously will depend on how quickly that loads. So you saw then a real life kind of issue then. Obviously, because the application isn't supported or anything, I've just side loaded this on. It had a bit of a wobble the application did then. Um, but it's back working now. But quite good to show that these things aren't. So that was what you get with these applications because they're not officially supported. Um, you will find you do get issues now and again. Some of them won't even work. Um, you can see generally it works absolutely fine. You can zoom in, out, all over the world. You can resize that window so you can get a different view on there. So that's Google Earth, looking really, really good. Okay, we've done Google Earth. Let's jump into the next one. Let's make sure we're recording. Yep, we're recording. Uh, so that's Google Earth. Um, so there are a couple of other ones, and I've noticed that obviously the the... To get certain things working, so TikTok, for example, I couldn't get working with just using the standard MetaQuest browser. Because uh, when you try and log into TikTok, it will take you to MetaQuest browser and doesn't work. Uh, so TikTok works without logging in, but if you want to log in into your profile, you'll need to get the Firefox browser. Um, so I've downloaded the Firefox browser again and sideloaded that on. And this works absolutely fine. So it's just an alternate browser, um, which works fine again I can resize that window and one thing to look out for with Firefox if you wanted to use it for kind of logging into different applications is let me just turn we'll go turn pass through off so we'll go into the three dots uh, down into settings and you'll see that I've got set as default browser turned on so anything I try and do authentication wise it will take me to this Firefox browser instead of the MetaQuest browser and that's how I got things like TikTok working with my login. Um, so yeah, you might not use this as the your main browser, but you, you may need to use it if you want to do certain things for authentication reasons. So that's Firefox browser working absolutely fine. So we'll have a look at another one. I think we've got one more we can probably look at, uh, which is Microsoft Teams. So this again is sideloaded on, and you can see that I've got um, an, an error pop up, which Teams won't run without Google Play services, which are not supported by your device. So, uh, not to go into too much detail, but Android uses Google Play services in the background to kind of run different processes and link into different Google services, basically, different applications. Um, so, the Teams does work. So, I'm logged into a, a certain account on here, and I can. Um, I can send messages and I can type things in here, in there, there. So I can send things there, I can type messages in and that will work fine. So I can send messages in Microsoft Teams. I can go into my calendar. I can do a meet now. And I can do a Teams meeting. So obviously this is just me going into a meet now, and and that's and that's um, that's using obviously my headset settings in terms of my microphone, the 
camera wise, there isn't a camera, I don't think you can share a camera in. Um, if I go into here, okay, so this obviously can't choose my settings in there. But generally, um, it works for chat. I've used it for chat a little bit. Um, I've just hidden some of the chats, but I've been using it for chats and obviously you can join meetings. So if you really want to use it, it's not the greatest um, experience, I'm totally honest with you, but it does work. There's just a couple of restrictions there, obviously, with the um, Google Play services error. Okay, last one from a side-loaded application-wise. Um, so if I go to my library, I've got Chiaki. I think that's how you say it, Chiaki. Not sure how you say it, to be fair. So this is um, an open source, I think it's open source, um, Android application for connecting to um, PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. Um, so this, I've watched a couple of videos on this, it looks good. Um, I've not fully tested this yet, so I'm not going to show it because I'm not, I'm not sure it definitely works. Um, but obviously I've got a PS5 and PS4 on my network. Um, so at some point we'll do another video on this, but go through it in terms of maybe some uh, the best settings, best settings to use in terms of resolution, etc, etc. But the application should work in theory and you use it in the same way. So you could be playing your PS5 again in here and you could be watching uh, maybe a YouTube, not YouTube video, but go, be going on different applications at the same time. So that's another one that might be quite useful if you wanted to do um, PS5 remote play using Chiaki. Okay, we're all done there now. A really quick video just showing off some applications inside the MetaQuest 3. So some uh, officially supported applications in terms of the, from the MetaQuest store. Um, so we showed them side by side in that view. Uh, we then jumped into looking at side-loaded applications using the we use SideQuest to get them on and gone through those. Um, so you can still do that multitasking, so you can have two uh, applications uh, from an official MetaQuest perspective and have a single side-loaded application in the middle or at one side. Uh, you can't run, or I've not been able to run, multiple side-loaded applications at the same time. Uh, but if you're using them in conjunction with your actual officially supported ones, then that does work. Um, and obviously, I've not tested every single Android application, because there's millions of them, uh, in terms of on the MetaQuest 3. Uh, but there is some trial and error there in terms of some just won't work. Uh, some you will need, obviously, as I mentioned in the video, the Firefox browser for that authentication method. And that does get you around a few different bits and bats with authentication. So if you are struggling with applications, because you can't sign into them, um, I think it does it with the PS PlayStation Remote Play application get the Firefox browser installed on your on your uh, MetaQuest 3 and that will get around that problem. Um, so yeah, a bit of a learning curve. Um, some really good stuff out there. There's other applications that are obviously available that you can get side-loaded, which may be useful. And I'll keep testing. If I come across any gems, I'll probably do another video on them. Uh, and I will do a video soon on the Chiaki application um, as a follow-up to the previous PS5 video we did, uh, which was kind of using a capture card to playing your PlayStation and other devices. Um, so we're all done now. Hopefully it's been informative. If you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If not for any reason, give it a thumbs down, give it a dislike. Let me know in the comment section why. Any questions about the video, any questions about my setup, anything I've done in the video, obviously drop that in the comment section. I'll reply to all questions. Um, if you've got any applications that you really do like on the MetaQuest 3 or 2 uh, that you've sideloaded, then please do drop it in the comment section let me know because I'm, I'm up for trying different bits and bats and different applications. So that would be really useful to know. Uh, and then if any other tips and tricks anyone else has got, again, drop them in the comment section, share them with me, share, or share them with other people viewing this video. Uh, and if you want to follow the Houston DIY channel along for more VR videos, home DIY projects, and much, much more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.